<laughs> okay. So um, there's a time in everybody's life when you realize it's probably that moment when you have to move out of home. For me, that time came when I was 26 years old and uh, my mum knocked on my door and said, Johnny, it's a weeknight, you should probably go to bed. And I'd say it was 2 a.m. and I was probably playing computer games at the time. Um, computer games play a pretty big part of my life. That's me doing a Ryu's Hadouken. That's me dressed as a Tetris, the, the red L. That's my favorite. What's yours? And uh, that's my best friend at her wedding. I got her and her wife and made them into an artwork that looks like two fighting characters from a computer game. They loved it. Uh, so I'm 29 years old now, and uh, I'm starting to realize that a lot of people think computer games are a child's pastime. And really, it's immature, it's, eva it's you know, the sort of thing that people do, it's escapist. And uh, really, you don't see many adults that play computer games these days. But uh, really, computer games have more than meets the eye to most people. It's got an incredibly unique vocabulary. Nerf isn't darts you shoot at people. A pug isn't a genetically deformed canine. Avatar is not a shitty film by James Cameron. <laughs> Grinding isn't something you do when you're distasteful or really drunk. You don't have to be a huge racist to be in a clan. And, well, I've got no time left for the rest. But I'll go through what art is to give you some perspective. Uh, it's many things, but it's not easily definable. It's uh, the classic arts like painting and sculpture. And then there's the broader arts, literature, photography, music, film. But uh, not all of the creative endeavours are art. Like, for example, the drawings of my girlfriend. <laughs> Or my recent drawings of my housemate Maddie during a live drawing session. Sorry, Maddie. Uh, but somebody might appreciate that as art. And that's when it takes on a value. It's perceived value. And what you're perceiving is the value of human creativity. So what I'm wondering is, games are creative. Why don't we appreciate those on the same level? But really, games are an amalgamation of all art forms. It's art, it's music, it's film, it's everything. And so it allows you to enter that world and explore it, interact with it on a level you can't do in a regular museum. And yet games are perceived as something in society that causes violence. Uh, it's uh, something that promotes laziness. In the worst cases, it uh, causes involuntary celibacy for life. <laughs> but I asked a friend the other day what they thought of games. She's not here now, Alex. But she said, I think they're a waste of time and they dull the mind. So I said to her, like, I thought, well, what causes this perception? And to me, I think it's a limited exposure to games. I think people are either playing Candy Crush, which is the equivalent of fucking slots at a casino, or they're just walking past their brothers or boyfriends or whoever's room and looking over their shoulder, seeing one moment of the game and thinking, well, that looks boring. But really, if I took you to the Louvre and showed you all the priceless works of art, but only showed you small portions of it, would you really appreciate it? No, of course you wouldn't. You have to step back and appreciate the full picture. You have to look at it, immerse yourself in it, engage your imagination, and really let it take you somewhere magical. So the perception, is, I'm not being fair to you guys if you don't play computer games, because the perception isn't simply your fault. It's also ours. Computer games can be incredibly sexist. They can be immature. And they're, the worst of all, they're incredibly male-centric. But ultimately, all art forms have the crap. I'm just focusing on the good parts. One of my favorite games of all time is called Planescape Torment. And it's an incredibly well-written game where you wake up in a morgue, you've got no memory of your past life, but the only information you have of how you got there are tattoos all over your body with information. That might sound familiar, Guy Pearce, because that film came one and a half years later. Suck on that film. Games one, film zero. <laughs> It's also an incredible story, Planescape Torment. It's an explore, exploration of identity. It's uh, basically about your identity and how it's rooted in the choices you make or the choices that you're given in life. Computer games can all also be visually stunning. There's a game called Dear Esther, which I played recently, where you travel to an abandoned island and uh, through you're, you listen to the narration of an unreliable narrator who tells you the story of a man who loved Esther and reads to you from excerpts uh, from the letters that he wrote to her. So if I could get some sound. I've begun my voyage in a paper boat without a bottom. I will fly to the moon in it. I've been folded along a crease in time, a weakness in a sheet of life. Now you've settled on the opposite side of the paper to be. It's all right, I prepared for this. So he reads, uh, I've... <laughs> 
begun my voyage in a paper boat without a bottom. I will fly to the moon in it. I have been folded along a crease of time, a weakness in the sheet of life. Now you're settled on the opposite side of the paper to me. I don't know what that means, but it sounds fucking beautiful. So, computer games can also be incredibly thought-provoking. There's a game called Sometimes Always Monsters, where it challenges your values in every way possible. You can see all the things that this game deals with, but the thing is it makes you make choices throughout the game and then it makes you deal with the consequences. I don't know of any art. Art can make you confront your fears and your hopes, but it doesn't make you deal with the consequences of those. And there's also politically motivated games. Papers, Please is a game where you play a border control officer and you have to choose between the safety of your family and the welfare of the immigrants who are trying to cross the border to seek refuge in your country. Games can also be incredibly terrifying. There's a game called Amnesia, which scared the shit out of me. I couldn't even finish it on my own. I had to get a friend over to finish it with me. You're hunted by monsters. You have no weapons whatsoever, and unlike most games. And essentially, you either run, you hide, or you die horribly. I guess you're wondering what the hell a scary game has to do with art, but to me, art is about evoking emotions that, you know, either scare you or inspire you, and this game scared the shit out of me, so it's pretty good art in my opinion. So, to me, I mean, I suppose... Yeah, it's really not scary without noise. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Video games, I said at the start, you can't really look at these things in isolation or in a brief glimpse. And what I've done is just given you a brief glimpse of four games. But as proof that they're art, the MoMA has an exhibition in New York that has dozens of rooms filled with computer games. Um, they essentially, as I said, come in every form of art. And really, you can... Next time you encounter someone playing a computer game, I recommend you take a chance with it. You don't just dismiss it. And you never know, it might just change your life like it's ruined mine. So thank you.